What's good guys and welcome to a pretty interesting and kind of different video. Today we're talking about Android settings for which you can often just go into a menu, hit a toggle and instantly make your smartphone experience better. With that being said, let's get started. The first one, which a surprisingly low number of Android users have even heard of, is Chrome Home. So whilst Google Chrome, the application on Android, is great, in fact for a lot of people it's the best browser out there, there is a little tweak you can make to it. So if you actually go into the Chrome application, hit the URL tab and type in Chrome Flags. And what you end up getting is Google's experimental menu. These are almost like beta features which they've never rolled out to the end application, but which they want people to constantly test. And from here, you can activate Google Home Mode, and that takes the URL bar from the top of the phone all the way to the bottom. It also adds some cool new transitions into it. Generally, I'd say it makes it a much better smartphone browser. Having the bar on the bottom means your fingers naturally rest in place slightly more over it. So you can generally flick between things and search for things a little bit faster. One thing I found criminally annoying about Android devices is you spend so much time customizing the home screen, making it look really pretty, and every time you download a new app from the Play Store, it automatically adds it to your home, clustering the whole thing up. However, if you go into the Play Store and hit the settings on there, you can actually disable this. So once you actually hit the setting, that means that when you download new applications, they just slide peacefully into application drawer and don't mess up your home. For the next one, we're taking a security angle, because what happens a lot of the time, when your Android device screen turns off, it doesn't lock instantaneously. There's normally a five to 10 second delay in which anyone who pinches the phone out of your hand could actually still use it fully. But there is a setting which allows you to lock the phone instantly the second you hit the power button. Now I'm about to talk to you about a fascinating series of settings that are hidden away in the dexterity and interaction section of the accessibility settings of your device. This is called universal switch. What it lets you do is create a series of if and then commands allowing your phone to respond to different gestures. But you might be thinking, my phone can do that anyway, my launcher supports this, but these are not on-screen gestures, these are real life gestures. So you could have it such that the front camera is constantly looking at you, you could nod your head down to perhaps bring down the notification bar, you could make it so that every time you plug in your earphones, the volume drops to a certain level, or every time you open your mouth, you'll go straight home. It's, like I said, an odd section of settings, but it's interesting nonetheless. One setting which you absolutely have to turn on, and to be honest, one I'm surprised doesn't come by default in a lot of phones, is a double tap the power button to open the camera. This is most beneficial for people who either bombard their phone with tons of different applications, for whom it would take five to 10 seconds to find the camera app manually, or just people who have big phones. If you have a really large device, then oftentimes you'll find in situations where you really wanna take a photo, you're just not holding your phone at quite the right angle. So you then gotta turn it upright again, browse through your apps, and then find the camera. Whereas actually, you'll be able to configure it so you could double tap the power to open the camera app, and then tap the volume down button to take the photo. A rather curious one, which to be honest, was intended for people who have reading difficulties, but which can be useful for just about everyone, is magnification gestures. So after you turn this on in the accessibility section, what it allows you to do is to zoom into your phone screen three times, no matter what application you're in. You simply triple tap the screen and it'll just go bam, it'll be right in there, which has some interesting benefits. It allows you within applications that don't let you manually zoom on photos to zoom in, to check things out in more detail. Even in the camera app, if you wanted to see what exactly you're capturing in a little bit more detail, just triple tap the screen. Another setting which you should probably change on the Google Play Store is improve Play Protect. Now you might have noticed recently Google's introduced Play Protect, which is essentially some sort of guarantee from Google that an application you're downloading is safe. However, there's a lot of third party apps, the ones which tend to be high risk anyway, which are completely unverified. So by heading into the Play Store settings and checking this box, that'll allow Google to investigate applications you're a little bit unsure about and then notify you if they're either safe or unsafe to use. So also hidden away within the accessibility section, we have the text-to-speak engine. And this is essentially your smartphone's way of converting written text into spoken word. Depending on which brand of phone you have, you may have two or three different engines installed, but from my testing, the Google's own one works the best. Now, by enabling this setting alone, unfortunately, that doesn't really allow you to do anything. What you need is a third party app like the voice allowed reader to then really manipulate that and use it to your advantage. What this could do is it could read any document you send it. It could be a PDF, a Word, many other different file formats. It can even read web pages. If you're simply browsing the internet and you share a web page to the app, it'll start dictating the whole thing. So you wanted to be driving your car at the same time as also learning about this very specific article you found, then this is really the only way to do it. The next one is not technically a setting and does require a little bit more configuration than the ones we've just shown, but for a very niche kind of user, it's very much worth it. 
This is the EVA facial mouse. It allows your phone to completely track the movements of your head. And what it does once you've installed it is brings up a cursor as if your smartphone was a tiny little computer. You then move your head left to right, up and down, and the mouse will move with it. And you can even click by blinking your eyes. So it's the kind of thing you might use if it's very cold and you've got to wear gloves, or if you're lying in bed in the morning and you just can't be bothered to use your hands. It's an interesting and refined tool, but it's just not for everybody. For those of you who are using Google's own Gboard keyboard application, I have a setting for you. And to be honest, if you're not using Gboard, you might want to strongly reconsider because from everything I've used, it is the fastest keyboard and also with the best text prediction engine. By default though, as with a lot of Android keyboards, it has a little bit of a problem. It'll actually change the format depending on the type of text field you're entering your text into. So sometimes it will show you the number row up top and sometimes it completely doesn't. Sometimes you have to tap two extra buttons just to access the numbers. So what you can do is go into the keyboard settings and just simply tap that toggle, which allows it to show them all the time. And voila, you're sorted. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. It is a little bit different from an Android app video or an Android customization video, but I thought you might like how instantaneous the process of changing a setting is. So if you did enjoy the video, it would mean so much to me if you could smash that subscribe button. And with that being said, I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.